Good morning. It's good to see you. It's good to have you today. A wonderful day that the Lord has made for us to come and learn from Him, receive from His Word as we daily practice His presence in our lives. Welcome this Sunday. We continue just learning the Bible. Um, we haven't started any book yet. We'll b begin maybe at a later date, but this few weeks. Thank you. Just going through uh, other portions of scriptures as the Lord leads us. Today we'll be in Exodus. Now, most of us, when we think of Exodus, we're just thinking, well, thou shall not kill, <laughs> thou shall not. <laughs> I was uh, a chaplain in the high school some time back. And uh, during the, uh, we'll, we'll have our service every Sunday, and during the announcement, you know, people would come with, you know, verses to encourage people, and apparently the last one was always Exodus. They'll read the, uh, the, the commandments, and then the last word would be, if you have my jumper, <laughs> so he used the Bible to, Straighten people. Ah, let us pray together and we will jump into our scripture for the day. God, we thank you. We thank you for this privilege. We thank you that you are a good God. We thank you for your grace, your mercy that I knew every morning. And we can attest of that, Lord, uh, that you have granted us your breath in our lungs. We have an opportunity to sit and receive from you our minds, the sound, what a blessing from you, our God. And we thank you that as we go through your word this morning, we pray that your spirit would lead us through it and cause our hearts to be drawn to you. In Jesus' name we pray. So I, ha I always have stories about my child. <laughs> uh, she, she has a lot of things going on in her mind. Her young mind is growing and a lot of things going on. Um, so the Bible tells us to train up a child while they're young so that when they are of age, they will not depart from what you have uh, trained them in. They will not forget it. It is just, you know, the disobedience. But They'll not forget. They know it, they just turn aside. You know, we, we, we try to give instruction to our child that this, this is what you ought to do, this is what you're not going to do. And when it's time to sleep, it's time to sleep. When it's time for this, you know, all these things, she knows them actually. She knows them because sometimes when we are giving this instruction, we have a rod in our, at, at the hand. So the rod works a way to tell her that if she doesn't comply, then there, there are repercussions of what will come. So you tell her things like, yeah, I understand. Do you understand? Yes, I do. <laughs> and then, just two, three minutes later, off your presence and she's gone her way, the very exact thing you told her not to do is the exact thing she's doing with a lot of strength, with a lot of motivation. And sometimes she will call you to show you what she's doing. She just forgot too soon that you told her not to do that. And then when she looks at me, Sometimes I have eyes that are very scary. <laughs> I look at her, she knows what is coming, and you know what she says? 
I won't do it again. <laughs> I won't do it again. Like, what did Jesus do? I won't do it again. Because she knows. But she's pressed the ignore button to fulfill her own desires, to do her own things, because she can't wait just to do those things that I told her not to do. And the story that we have here, it's quite similar to what we encounter in our daily lives, that the Lord speaks to us, and all of a sudden, we have our own ways of doing things. So please open with me Exodus 32. We're going to dwell in a few verses, but we're going to read the whole chapter for the sake of context. Now when the people saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aaron and said to him, Come, make us gods that, we, that shall go before us. For as this Moses, the man who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And Aaron said to them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people broke off the golden earrings and which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the, golden, the gold from their hand and he fashioned it with an engraving tool and made a golden calf. Then they said, This is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. For when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. Then they arose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said to Moses, go down, get down there. For your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made themselves a, a, a molded calf and worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, this is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen these people, and indeed, it is a stiff-necked people. Therefore, let me alone that my wrath may burn hard against them, that I may consume them, and I will make you, Moses, a great nation. Then Moses pleaded with the Lord, his God, and said, Lord, why does your wrath burn hard against your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with, great might, with, with a great mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians speak and say, he brought them out to harm them, to kill them in the mountain, and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fire's wrath and relent from this harm to your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servant, to whom you saw by your own self and said to them, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and all this land that I have spoken of, I give to your descendants and they shall inherit it forever. So the Lord relented from harm, which he had said he would do to his people. And Moses turned and went down from the mountain and when and the two tablets of the testimony were in his end. The tablets were written on both sides. On one side and on the other side were written. Now the tablets were the work of God. And the writings 
was the writing of God engraved on the tablets. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said to Moses, there is a noise of war in the camp. But he said, it is not the noise of the shout of victory, nor the noise of the cry of defeat, but the sound of singing I hear. So it was as soon as he came near the camp. Those people should be born again. They don't care about Jesus Christ. My wrath is burning hot. against the people of God. <laughs> so it was, as soon as he came down, he saw the calf and the dancing. So Moses' anger became hot. And he cast down the tablet out of his hands and broke them at the foot of the mountain. Then he took the calf which they had made, burned it in the fire, and ground it to powder. And he scattered it on the water and made the children of Israel drink it. And Moses said to Aaron, Why did these people do, or what did these people do? To you that you have brought so great a sin upon them. So Aaron said, Do not let the anger of my Lord become hot. You know the people that they are set on evil. So they said to me, Make us gods that shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And I say to them, whoever has any gold, let them break it off. And so they gave it to me, and I cast it into the fire, and this calf came out. And when Moses saw that the people were unrestrained, for Aaron did not restrain them to their shame among their enemy, then Moses stood in the entrance of the camp and said, whoever is on the Lord's side, come to me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together to him. And he said to them, thus says the Lord God of Israel, let every man put his sword on his side and go in and out from the entrance to the entrance through all the camp and every man kill his brother, every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. So the sons of Levi did according to the word of Moses. And about 3,000 men of the people fell that day. And Moses said, Consecrate yourself today to the Lord that he may bestow on you a blessing this day. For every man has opposed his son and his brother. Now it came to pass on the next day that Moses said to the people, you have committed a great sin. So now I will go up to the Lord and perhaps I can make atonement for your sins. Then Moses returned to the Lord and said, oh these people have committed a great sin and have made for themselves a god of gold. Yet now, if you will forgive their sin, but if not, I pray, blot me out of your book which you have written. And the Lord said to Moses, whoever has sinned against me, I will blot his him out of my book. Now therefore go 
lead the people to the place which I have spoken to you. Behold, my angels shall go before you. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit punishment, I will visit punishment upon them for their sins. So the Lord plagued the people because of what they did with the calf which Aaron made. This is going to be our topic this morning, the worship of a convenient God. We see here in this story, as it is narrated to us, these are people that the Lord has spoken to before. These are people that God has always protected, even when they are in the land of bondage, even when they were severely being punished by work in Egypt. The Lord told Moses that I have heard the cry of my people and I'm going to send you to go and deliver them. And that happened that the Lord, after all these plagues and the things that happened to, to Pharaoh, and he said, now you guys can go. And they saw what the Lord was able to do. The Lord, through Moses, parted the sea and they walked on a dry land. When they got over the other side, they praised God for the wonderful thing that the Lord had done for them. And this was marvelous in their eyes and it was such a freeing thing, such a freedom to know that you're not going to be under this bondage anymore. And the Lord was working in them. And we go even to uh, later in Exodus chapter 20, the Lord gave commandments of what they ought to do. And they were categorically told not to worship any graven image. Don't worship other gods. But when Moses was up there, things happened. And the three aspects that we're going to see here or talk about, number one is the impatience of these people, the children of Israel. Number two is the self-rule. They want to rule themselves. They want to dictate what they're going to do. And number three is the inherent idolatry. God wants them not to go the way of the idols, and they go and worship them. These people, the Bible tells us that when they saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain, they gathered together themselves to Aaron and said to him, Come, let us make gods that shall go before us. For as this Moses, the man who brought us out of Egypt, we don't know what has become of him. Maybe he's changed his mind. Maybe he's tired of us. Maybe something just happened. We don't know. They got tired waiting. And they wanted a way out. And you know the interesting thing about it is the translation for these words, God, is Elohim. Though it's in the small g in our Bibles. But the Hebrew connotation of it is Elohim. They want to sacrifice to Elohim. They want a God that can lead them but they want to fashion this God to their own likeness. Quite amazing to me that you can make something, but you want to make an assumption that it will still lead you. You know, God make fun of these people and say, hey, you, you, you go to the forest, you cut down trees, or you know, the excess uh, part of the tree, you burn them, you make furniture out of it, a part of it, you make a God, and you sit down to worship. Who is the real fool? <laughs> Who is it? Can that God speak? Can this God hear you when you're in trouble? 
I mean, what, what comes to our mind when we think of making another, another God that we can worship? The children of Israel here, they forgot too soon. This Moses, we don't know what has become of him. So what we're going to do, we, we are not going to practice patience. We're just going to rush and do our own things. Friends, learn to wait on God. The Bible tells us that those who wait upon the Lord, their strength will be renewed. Meaning, in the process of waiting, we get tired. Our strength goes down. But the Bible tells us that when we are consistent in waiting, in the waiting period, the Lord will strengthen us again. Impatience is what caused these men and women of the children of Israel to start to create a God that is convenient for them. A God that I can turn around, a God that I can speak to, they will do whatever I want. A God that I will say, hey, lead me, but in the end of the day, I will carry this God as I go my own way. How will this God lead you when he can't hear, he can't see, he has no feelings? But because I want to go this direction, I'm going to carry this God and go this direction and make an assumption that this God has led me. Now we, may, we, we might say, man, these this children of Israel, they, they're not grateful and grateful. Hold up, hold your hoses. <laughs> and let's think about what we do as a people to the God who has saved us. How many times have we gone to the way of serving other gods? Maybe you don't have the gold to melt, but there's something other, there are other things that you can melt and make it you become your own. There are other things, you know them. Please take a, a piece of paper, write them right now and send them to me. I want to know what you guys worship. They want a God. And they speak to Aaron, who was uh, Moses' brother. And they say, hey, th these guys are close and the Lord is using these people. So we, we, we want still to be associated with Elohim. But we want to lead him. We don't want him to speak to us. We want us to lead ourselves. Isn't it what Jesus said? That people will call me Lord, Lord, but they have no part of me. <laughs> they, they've used my name. They say, oh, we've cast out demons, we've prophesied, we've brought the dead back to life through your name. And Jesus will say, get off. I don't know you. Who are you anyways? Does it ring a bell that we can use Elohim, but our intentions are not right. We can use the name of God for our own personal gains. We have a God that is itchy, itchy in our ears. That is the kind of God that we want. Not the God that tells us don't worship other, other gods. So Aaron tells them, bring all the gold. Bring all the gold, bring all the good things so that I can make what you guys want. He's representing a lot of preachers that we have today. You guys bring all the things and then we'll make something out of it. And after that, we have made our palace here. We made our abode right here. We're going to pay much attention to this thing. 
Aaron did not even, I, I don't know if it was the pressure from these people. He didn't even think about it. Like, how, how is it possible? He's been with Moses. He's gone to, to, to Pharaoh with Moses. He knows that this is, this is not going to be the God of Israel. But he just gives in. You know what Paul says that in the last days, we, we, we want people who speak itchy, itchy words. We gather ourselves to them. They don't tell us what the Bible really says. They have their own ideas about the scriptures. And we want to pay attention to them because they're not rebuking us. They're not correcting us. He took all the gold and made a molded calf. And they said, this is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. Think about it. I mean, you just made it right now, and you're making a reference that this is what brought you out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord is just up there wondering, these people you forget too quickly. What, what happened with our brain? What happened with the sound mind that God gave us? It's like we, we're looking up like, you know, the chickens. They look up and then you trap them with maize, they come again. You want to kill them and they don't know. They just keep on coming. You scare them, they run away, they come back. This should not be us who have been delivered by God, saved by grace, bought at a price. We ought not to do that. And say, this, this will be your God that brought you out of the land of Egypt. And when they made this proclamation, Aaron said, tomorrow we're going to offer sacrifices to God. You see, so Aaron saw it, and he built an altar before it, and Aaron made a proclamation and said, tomorrow is the feast to the Lord. In your Bible, it's capitalized, right? The Lord Yahweh, referencing the true God. So the reference is for Yahweh, but what is happening is not towards Yahweh because they have turned aside to worship a graven image. Friends, you, you, the Bible tells us to taste the Spirit, to know whether they're from God. Because many people will just make proclamations and say, I belong to God. They call the name of Jesus. They call the name of the Lord, but they don't have a part with the Lord. They're going to make sacrifices. Then they rose the next day and they brought all the people. They uh, offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up early to play. <laughs> There's a party going on. There's a party. People are eating and dancing and just playing around. Because in their mind, we have a God. You know, this, this tradition, they borrowed it from the Egyptians. They were the ones who carved gods. And one of it that was very prominent was a golden calf. They saw it and they want it. We see things with other people and we want them. It looks nice in our eyes, right? Bowing before this golden calf. The Lord said, no, 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 don't go that route. It will be dangerous for you. Your life will be destroyed. Worship Yahweh only. These people, is, see what the Lord said. And the Lord said to Moses, go down. Get down. For your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. You see the reference? God says, 
Moses, these are your people. <laughs> your people, you brought them out of the land of Egypt. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. And they have made uh, themselves a, a molded calf and worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, this is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. This was the greatest sin that God was angered about. To worship other gods that are graven, the made by hands. They have tools to chip it, to make it and to mold it according to their own likeness. Maybe these people would have molded great stuff for this county. They were artisans. <laughs> and the Lord said to Moses, I have seen these people, and indeed it is a stiff-necked people. So these people of yours that you brought from the land of Egypt, stiff-necked. Have you guys ever woken up with a stiff neck? You know what it feels like? You know what it is? You, you, you're turning like a robot. The Lord says, you, you cannot gaze on the Lord again. You're stiff necked. You want to look up, but your, your neck won't allow you to turn to the Lord. This is a stiff-necked people. Now, therefore, let me alone that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them and I will make you a great nation. You know, God is giving Moses an offer right here. An offer, because we know the end of the story, we'll be like, well, you know, we, we know how it goes. But if the Lord would have given you this offer, <laughs> like it is not Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. It is the great name will spring forth, not even from Adam. No, it is from who? From Moses. You start to, you know, think of how great your name will be after you're gone. That all the references will be, uh, you know, the God of Moses and his sons and Whatever. And Moses thought about it for a second and said, wait a minute. God, he pleaded with God, pleaded with the Lord God and said, Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against the people whom you brought out of the land? So no one wants to associate with these stiff-necked people. God said to, Mo to Moses, these are your people, you brought them out of the land of Egypt. Moses threw the same. These are your people, God, you brought them out of the land of Egypt with, with great power and with a great mighty hand. Why should the Egyptians speak and say he brought them out, of, out to harm them, to kill them in the mountains? and consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from your fire's wrath and relent from this harm to your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servant, to whom you saw by your own self and say to them, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and, I will, and all this land that I have spoken of, I give to your descendants and they shall inherit it forever. So the Lord relented from the harm which he had said he would do to his people. And Moses turned and went down from the mountain um, and the two tablets of testimony were in his end and the tablets were written on both sides. One side and as well as the other side. Now the tablets were the work of God and the writing was the writing of God engraved in the tablets. You, th you think about this precious tablet that Moses is bringing from the mountain. It is handwritten by who? God. God is writing something that will guide me 
But before that comes to my view, I've already gone to worship another God. Another God, a God that cannot write on a tablet, by the way. A God that cannot speak and say, hey, this is the way you should go. A God that cannot part the sea again. What kind of God is that? It's like, no, we don't want any other person to rule over us. We want to rule over us. No God. We, we don't want to take responsibility of our sins. We want to do as we please. And so what are we going to do? Jump right into idolatry while God had said we should not. You know, man will always worship something, especially the one that is visible. Those are the ones that we want something that we can see. And if we, what we see is not nice, we'll make another one after our own likeness and worship it. That tells you that man is actually made to worship, but we are only turning ourselves to worship other things. We are not worshiping Yahweh. We are not worshiping the real God. Like these people, they, they can't wait. In other words, they're saying, I can deal with people rejecting me. I can deal with any other sort of rejection, but I cannot deal with the silence. God, you're not speaking. We've been here waiting for days. We don't know what is happening. As for this Moses who brought us out, we don't know what happened with him. We don't know what's up with him. I mean, I can deal with someone slapping me. I just can't deal with the silence. You know, sometimes people will say, or will say to our friends, that, that, that silence is killing me, right? Your partner is not talking to you. What do you say? You don't care anymore. <laughs> you don't value our, our relationship anymore. You don't call me anymore. No text in the morning anymore. No. You guys know what I'm talking about. Right? You guys just flew from heaven. You have no idea. Those who are new here on earth, that is what we do. <laughs> we, we tell people when they don't talk to us. We tell them that we miss them. And when they don't say it, we get mad. You know, that is a discipline that men should learn and we are learning. I told you I love you in the morning. Just keep that until evening. I shall return for sure by the grace of God. In Tarudi home, so relax. They call you, you are at work. For no reason, by the way, just calling, just checking. And then you want to hang up the phone because you're in the middle of work. Like, oh, why are you rushing? Where are you going? I'm talking to you. Oh, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? This thing called patience, we have driven it out of the window just to wait. But the Lord, the, the Bible tells us those who wait upon the Lord, their strength, they will mount up like we eagles. Their strength shall be renewed. The Lord will not leave you to die there breathless. She knows about you. And when he's giving us this command, he knows what we are going to do exactly. That is why ahead of time, he's warning us. She's warning us. But we don't hear to this warning. So there's the same anger that God had. Moses went down and he saw it. He was angered. 
In fact, he took the calf, broke it, he was busy grinding this gold, poured it on the water, and said, you, all of you guys, drink this water. God, did, God did, didn't go to that extent. <laughs> but Moses, who told God, you know, these are your people. Relax, your people. You brought them out. What will the, the nations say about your people? That you brought them here to kill them? Now Moses is grinding gold and you guys are drinking gold. <laughs> that is not, it's not healthy, I think. <laughs> but he's mad at the people for the adultery, for the idolatry. He's mad at them. Say that you drink it. Drink it. It may be because of fear, because Moses, whom they thought will not come back, is back here like, whoa, we better drink it. <laughs> Or we're going to die. And then there was another command. And this command, he, he, he told them, you know, if you are on the Lord's side, come this side. And the sons of Levi came. The sons of Levi came. Let us uh, jump here to verses 28. So the the sons of Levi did according to the word of Moses and about 3,000 men fell that day. Imagine, 3,000 people died, slain, killed. But you know, as we conclude here, the, the worship team, you're welcome to come. We think of this place that the law is given in this mountain in Exodus chapter 20 verses 32 and going on. There's the giving of the law in Exodus in Mount Sinai and people disregarded the law and what happened? 3,000 people fell that day. We come to the New Testament, we come to um, Jerusalem. Instead of giving of the law, we have the giving of the Spirit in Acts chapter 2, where the Spirit comes upon them and um, while they were praying in the upper room. That was in Jerusalem. And you know what happened right there in Jerusalem? 3,000 people's lives were revived. They were given life. So death came by the law, but life came through the grace of God. All this while, all these years, God has been working out plans for people to be saved, for people to be, uh, to, to be bought. And the plan was Jesus Christ. He came and died for our sins so that we'll be bought by his precious blood. And even when, sometimes when we don't even see the grace of God, we know that he's always at work. Whether we see it or we don't see it, we know that the Lord is at work. And what is he doing? Calling unto the sons of men to return to him. We see the outpouring of the Holy Spirit here in in Acts chapter 2. And when the apostle Peter stood to speak, you know, Moses asked them, those who are on the Lord's side to come. But here when the apostle spoke, He gave them an opportunity to say, I want to be on the Lord's side. I want to come and be on the Lord's side. And 3,000 of them became spiritually alive. Friends, what we see 
sometimes is not what the reality is. We see a lot of people, maybe they're dead. They need to be spiritually awakened. They need Jesus. They need the Lord to walk in their lives. And we all know that we need Jesus Christ. And so we ought to, to make some prayers to the Lord. Remembering that your life is not your own. As it is written in Jeremiah 10, 23 and 24. That I know, O oh Lord, a man's life is not his own. I don't belong to myself. If you know you don't belong to yourself, then honor the Lord with your life. Do not go the way of our forefathers who were stiff-necked people. Paul urges us in Romans 12 that I urge you brothers in the view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Or this is your reasonable service to God. Don't go and start to craft other things to worship because you have received the king in your life. Offer then yourselves to him as a living sacrifice. She says in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, you are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Romans 14, 8. If we live, we live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or we die, we belong to the Lord. Is that your conviction? Because we, we have people who will die, but not in the Lord. But those who have been bought at a price, you know that to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. So whatever it is, I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. And we should make a prayer like Jeremiah. Say, Lord, direct me. It is not for man to direct his steps. Psalms 119, 133 says, Direct my footsteps according to your word. Let no sin rule over me. Jonah chapter 2, verses 8. Those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs. You're clinging to idols. You're clinging to other things apart from God. You're forfeiting a wonderful grace that would be yours, that would be guiding your life. Or have you prayed to God to correct you, to rebuke you, to instruct you, the same Jeremiah 10, 24 say, Correct me, O Lord, but, not with, but only with justice, not in your anger, lest you reduce me to nothing. Hebrews 12, 11. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful later on. However, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. So the Lord would discipline those that he loves. It says in Proverbs 3, 11 to 12, the Lord chastens those that he loves. Maybe the Lord is in that season when he's, he's working on you, right? Chipping you with a chisel. It's not very interesting. You don't love it. But at the end of the day, it produces righteousness. Friends, 
we have gone the way of the children of Israel. We have worshipped a God that is convenient to us. A God that we have fashioned after our own likeness. Yahweh, the true God, doesn't appreciate that. And he gives us this opportunity time after time to return and come back to him. He's a gracious God. Whatever things the law was not able to fulfill, we see Jesus coming in place and saying, hey, I know you're not able to do it. I know you can't. That is why I'm here. I know you're wondering with all these baggages. I know you're wondering. Maybe your heart has been swayed with other things. But God says, hey, only if you would pay attention. Only if you'd listen to the Lord. It would make a great difference. And the same God who had mercy on the people who offended the Holy God that time, he's the same God who is calling on us and he wants to have mercy to whom he will have mercy. He wants to forgive you. He wants to revive you. You're willing, he's willing. Let us bow our heads in prayer. God, we thank you for all that you have done, for all that you have taught us. We thank you that you, in your anger, you didn't destroy us. You showed mercy. And I pray that that same mercy that you showed to the children of Israel, that you have shown people throughout the Bible history, I pray that you show us today. As many as we are gathered here today, we need you. We know it. We need your mercy. We need your forgiveness. I pray that we will not be a stiff-necked people who are going to run away from you. But Lord, help us to be a people who will be drawn to you, who will follow your commandments and enjoy the fruit of the land therefore. So anyone needing forgiveness, Lord, I pray that you forgive them. You know their hearts. You know what's going on with them. I pray that your Holy Spirit will be at work in them today, even now. Now as we give to you our offering, the, the fruit of our labor, I pray that we'll give that which will bring you glory as a thanksgiving from our hearts to what you have done for us. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we have prayed.